Need any help lighting up your miniatures and scenarios? Learn how to bring life to your creations using LEDs. Hi guys, I'm Julia. In this video, we will show you some options on how to use four types of LEDs in your pieces to get great results. It may seem complex to deal with electricity, right? I mean, you'd have to choose between a variety of LEDs that exist on the market, solder the wires together and many other stuff. But let's here to simplify this knowledge for you. We have selected four models of LEDs for different applications and we will explain how the electrical connection is made, creating an independent circuit to plug them in characters, objects and scenarios. And if you already have this knowledge, we will also show you how we created our amazing cyberpunk diorama. This is the first DIY video we're making, but it definitely won't be the last. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to keep up with all the content we make for you. To start creating the diorama, we search for numerous references on the internet, following the lore of the Neon Street 3K bundle. The final decision was to create an atmosphere in the environment using blue and pink light to shoot the video, dividing the scenes between the upper part, which are the city buildings, and a lower city located near to the street level. In this bundle, we have a modular building, where you can add several floors to make a skyscraper, in addition to having objects for the internal space of the building as well as objects for the street. But as the city is not made of just one building, we decided to expand the outside, creating other buildings, exploring other techniques in order to create scenarios and dioramas that can be used to play and also to create the video that we made to release the bundle. For that, a good drawing, a list of references and a mood board are the first step when creating a plan of action. First, we define the format of the streets thinking about the layout of the buildings and what scenes we would like to do in our case. With the shapes of the streets defined, we were able to think about the position and number of buildings that we would make. Then we defined the types of buildings, such as hotels, cafeterias, carry bars and nightclubs. Of course, we couldn't miss the famous Big Bang Cantina, which is where all our welcome packed characters hang out before their adventures. To create the entire floor structure, separating asphalt, sidewalk, building, facades and other elements, such as billboards, we made a 3D project that allow us to better visualize the layout and proportion between each space. This project was created thinking about the production, where each face is a piece that we will laser cut in 3mm MDF sheets. We took to a makerspace the .dxf files, they are the vectors for cutting each element created in a 3D project. There were more than 100 individual parts that were positioned in the cutting area of the laser machine. After one hour, all the pieces that we needed were cut. Since this project consists of many individual pieces, we separated them by buildings, so it was possible to leave everything more organized to assemble faster later on. We also use super glue for everything, as it speeds up the work of joining the numerous MDF pieces. This was the first step that we can call the skeleton of our diorama. But the process of adding more elements and painting, fixing the windows and all the details that makes the diorama more realistic are still missing. Now, we are going to start installing the LEDs. First, we will create the luminous panels, banners and billboards that will be distributed throughout the city. We create an internal structure in the buildings to direct the light to the openings of these panels. By the way, the art of each of these luminous panels was made by our graphic design team. Initially, we tested using a basic printer with common paper and when fixing it to the face gate of the buildings, we noticed that the light passes through the paper, generating a great result for these luminous elements. So we leave it this way instead of keeping printing to test with other types of papers or printers. For this application, we use a white LED strip, which we cut in the indicated place to reduce its size and solder the wires to the positive and negative coils the LED strip has, being ideal to identify the wires by color to facilitate the connections later. Soldering is quite simple, but it takes a little practice. First, it's necessary to melt some of the tin on the tip of the super hot iron. 
then pass it quickly on the contacts of the LED strip where indicated. At the end of the wire, we must strip a longer length, twist the wire a little and apply it all over the apparent metallic area. After that, we can cut it into a shorter length to join the LED strip. Then you must put the iron on the wire, and when we see that the tin has melted, approach the connection on the LED strip. You will notice that the tin that was on the tape quickly melts and joins the wire. At this point, we can remove the soldering iron, and in a few seconds, the tin will harden, creating the connection. Most of these tapes are connected to 12V, so to energize it and make the light turn on, a source is needed. We bought this connector that allows you to connect the positive and negative wires to the source plug. On one of these wires, we add an individual on and off switch, so you have the freedom to use it according to needs. To use only one source for all sections of the LED strip, it's very simple. We must put together all the positive wires and connect to the source plug. We also do the same to the negative. But remember to always consider the positive and negative pole indicated on the LED strip. If you don't have a soldering iron or don't have experience with it, there are quick connectors for LED strips that don't need soldering. This means all other connections can be made by just twisting the wires together to ensure they are secure with an insulating tape. Another way to avoid using soldering iron is to heat shrink sleeves. Now, we're going to make some independent circuits with 5mm LEDs. And an integrated on and off battery module. Doing that will allow us to include lighting at the specific points after finishing the diorama and positioning the camera to film. This is a simple process. Check this out. These 5mm LEDs have two legs, a longer one that indicates the positive pole and a smaller one that indicates the negative pole. In the battery module, there is usually an indication on the side showing that we must put the 3V battery that also has both poles, making sure to observe it's possible to see which wires comes out of each connector. Normally, the wires are different from each other to facilitate when connecting them. That is, if you make an inverted connection, the LEDs will simply not turn on. But there is no risk of burning. In the same way as the others, we can solder the wires directly to the LED or just rub each corresponding wire on the legs of the LED, ensuring isolation and good fixation. This way, bad contacts do not occur. If you want to test these LEDs, check colors or even make a circuit without any wires or a case. You can simply put the legs of the LEDs on the correct side of the battery and it will light up. To exemplify some successful situations that we've gone through when using 3D printing and lighting, we decided to make a more manual modification on an object that was not primarily modeled thinking about lighting. This means it's possible to adapt it, even if it takes a little more work. For instance, this car has really cool headlights, but it would look super awesome with good lighting. With a little patience and the tools we used to finish and send it, a hole was created and that's where the light will pass through. Besides fixing the LED, it helps dissipate the light. We also added a little translucent resin, closing the hole on the front. We did the same on the back, but we added a little red pigment in the resin for the tail lights. As this is an object in the 32mm scale, it's already very small and that's why we had to choose a smaller LED. 
The tiny dot, as incredible as it may seem, are micro LEDs 04, 02 and have a very strong lighting for their size. They are perfect for the type of application, as they take up very little space. That's why we use it in other areas of the buildings and on street lighting poles. Buying them already with this solder wire makes any installation possible. And we can connect four equal LEDs to a single 3 volts battery, being possible to use the battery module with a node and off switch. Just remember that it's always good to test the circuits before making the final installation on the port. Because in this case, the orange LEDs that we use on the back do not turn on together with the white LEDs, and that's why we had to add two batteries. To connect these LEDs, the wires will probably have different colors, and the red wire most of the time indicates the positive side. However, if these LEDs connect to the inverted sides, there is also no problem. The most that can happen is they will not turn on. We open the bottom of the car to unbat the entire circuit from the inside and create a lighted car, but without any wires coming out of it to some power source. So, we unbatted the circuit in the car and our partner Leo Campus came to Lutz headquarters to paint it. The link to the full video of Leo painting this car is in the description of this video. Well, before showing the last type of LED that we are going to use, we have to advance our diorama a little further. With the skeleton of the building and streets, we moved on to the step of adding more elements that created the cyberpunk city. Some of these parts were taken from parts that went wrong from previous sci-fi bundles. These elements have helped a lot to create a variety, and you can create them with different materials. We used cork, wood, corrugated paper, electronic waste, laser cut pieces, wires, tubs and everything we thought that could look nice. We even printed some other elements that help create this atmosphere, like this truss and these exhaust air outlets. We fixed these elements using super glue or hot glue, which can speed up the work. This allowed us to move on to the painting stage before adding the last type of lab. For the painting, we did something simpler and without many different complex processes. First, we used the Make Black Spray Paint as the base color and we worked with three other pants, white, brown and ochre, creating an atmosphere of dirty and rusty metal with stainless cement, that is, we used very dark tones overall. Bringing a little light in some parts with the dry brush technique using white paint. For the asphalt on the street, we used a 1mm cork, which is excellent for this type of application, as it has a very interesting texture and it's similar to real asphalt. To create some cracks, we tore up the cork to reach a very real asphalt result. To paint the central and pedestrian strips, we made a mask. We sprayed it with black paint, smearing it with grey and brown. But as cork absorbs a lot of the paint, it ended up smudging a little on the edges. So, we realized that it was easier to use paint without diluting it. On the sidewalks, we created more visible divisions with a brush and smeared it with brown and gray. To make it even more real, sewer and metal plates were printed on plain paper, cut and glued to create the tail. For the garage doors and roofs, we used a corrugated paper that instantly creates a very real representation of these types of materials. We just needed a little paint 
to highlight and dirty the paper and now it looks great. For the windows, doors and billboards, we opted for semi-translucent plastic found in paper folders. We used one lighter and one dark, choosing to add more than one layer to have a variation of lights between the windows. To add color to these windows, it was simpler to use a layer of tissue paper on the inside. Other details were added with paint, including small dots of color and a metallic look. Finally, we used fluorescent paint, which glows in black light, and added more points that would look nice lit up. Finally, we were able to install the last type of LED, which is preferable to call it a light wire, as it's literally three wires covered by a hose, making everything very flexible and resistant. Despite not having a very high light intensity, it generates another luminous element that can make all the difference in your diorama or object. We bought the light wire that only works with the controller. But it's possible to cut that wire and redo the connections, linking all the small segments into a single controller, even if the color is different. If you're going to try this type of LED, prepare yourself because it's going to be laborious and you must have a lot of patience because it's a little difficult to bear the three wires inside. The three wires are side by side, one thicker in the middle and two very thin ones on each side to bear and connect the circuit. First, we must remove the outer tube by cutting its contour, but be careful to not cut the two wires that are very delicate internally. After that, the easiest and safest way we can find is positioning the light wire on the table with an X-Actor blade, removing a top layer of plastic that surrounds the threads and carefully separating the central thread and joining the two thinnest wires. After completing this step, we can solder other wires and extend the connection where necessary. This LED wire has no positive or negative sides, both sides work, but it's always good to keep a pattern, joining all the thick wires together in a wire of one color and a set of thin wires with another color. The heat is capable of shrinking noodles and excellent for insulating connections and making these points more resistant. The fixing of this light wire will depend on where you install it, but we used the famous hot glue and super glue to fix it in the places we planned, such as the cracks designed to receive these wires. We installed these on and off switch holders in each of the buildings, checked all the last details and took them to our dark studio to film it. We set everything up, connected the last wires, positioned the external lights and started recording to carry out all the content that we do with such dedication for you. Not everything is simple when it comes to creating a diorama or including LEDs in your pieces. But with a little knowledge, practice and persistence, it's possible to raise the level of your projects and make them look even better. I hope this video inspires you to explore new skills. This is the first of many DIY videos we have planned for Luke's channel. So if you have any requests or ideas for this type of content, leave a comment down below. We love to know what you guys want to see here. Bye! See you in the next one!